At this point, we have a nice working API platform implementation for our album resources. It means we can get, put, post, and delete. But we've largely only tested the happy path. And back in the real world, most of the hard work, in my opinion, in software development, goes into ensuring that we either entirely avoid or defensively mitigate against the unhappy path. This is the pesky situations whereby one of our API consumers does something untoward or unwanted. Now, I won't say unexpected, as it is our job to try and plan for the moments of madness that end users seemingly enjoy exploring. And we have some existing edge cases that we can start from. One such example would be looking at where our track count is set to zero. Now it's almost inevitable at this point that our API platform implementation is not going to behave identically to this. The entire process of serializing errors is different to our previous implementations. It's really easy to see this if we send in a manual request using Postman and we'll look at what we do get. So we get back a really nice looking error. We can see what went wrong and why. And we didn't need to do very much at all in order to get some really nice output. Now, it's not at all what our BHAT test expects, but it is the same behavior, only the presentation is different. Again, there's no simple way to kind of munge our test suite to make this generic. We're just going to need new tests. Now, honestly, I'd love to say that there's some ultra slick way of coming up with these tests, but from experience, there really isn't. My process is to simply try and imagine the numerous ways that our API consumer might, or you know, definitely will, screw up. And then we have to document this in our test suite. This is one of the reasons I really love BHAT, because no matter who you are, whether you're technical or not very technical or whatever, it's pretty straightforward for someone to read through these test suites and understand what we expect and also the exact outcome that we're going to get. Again, even if you're not very technical, looking at this, you should be able to see, you know, we see quite a nice looking error if we send in some bad data. You don't really need to know what it all does, but it's fairly easy to understand and talk about sort of in meetings and stuff like that. It's really nice, you know, if you've got non-technical project managers or product owners that you've got to liaise with. And it's also just nice to share with the team generally, as it serves as really nice living documentation. Now, my approach is really quite unscientific. I just use a client like Postman to send in a manual request and then I take a copy of the response and this then becomes my test. This does mean that we need a working API in order to write our tests. So this isn't true sort of TDD, but then this isn't really TDD anyway. This is a loose form of behavior driven development. Anyway, the outcome is what's important here in my opinion. We document and test our system and then the system behaves as we expect. About the only downside that I can see to this approach is depending on how diligent you've been in tracking and recording your errors, you're going to have to update each test accordingly. There is a potentially interesting discussion to be had here around the fact that we haven't changed the behavior of our system, but we have got different output. But that in itself is a slightly different can of worms that I don't want to open in this particular series. However you look at it, the nice thing is we're done. That's our API platform implementation complete.